The war in Europe rages on. The Allies have secured France, but it is a tenuous hold on France and requires the armed forces of both the Americans and the British to stabilize the French government so as they will not collapse underneath the armed buildup of the German and the Imperial forces massing on French borders. The battle lines are somewhat reminiscent of the Great War a generation earlier, with the battle lines drawn, sometimes even the old trenches occupied by the armed forces on both sides. Picardy and Alsace-Lorraine belong to the French, British and American armed forces, whereas Belgium and Bavaria belong to the Germans. The only exception to this is the Nova Roma Imperium, doing their own imperial might and aggrandizement, the empire building in the Mediterranean, as well as in the African theater, having captured Cape Town, South Africa, and the bulk of African territories. In the east, the Germans have pushed into Soviet territory, capturing a considerable amount of territory. The Soviets have pushed back and recaptured some, but the bulk of territory has shifted over into German hands. But the strength on both sides begin to peter out. The Soviets continue to build a bastion of strength in Moscow, withdrawing troops from Leningrad and Stalingrad so as to hold on to Moscow territory. But German armed forces have now turned their attention westwards towards France, and now perhaps we'll see a diminishing amount of German forces on this front, and the Soviets might rise again resurgent. The Japanese, on their hand, have uh, solidified their hold in Southeast Asia, in Manchukuo, in East, uh, the Soviet Far East, and in the Pacific they have engaged the Anzac forces off the coast of Australia. The battlegrounds on this side is somewhat tenuous as well. There's a silence before a coming storm as the Americans build up their forces, the Japanese build up forces, the FEC prepare for the next great lunge, the Anzac recover from their attacks, and the Italians themselves gather themselves for another great leap into conquest and war. The British and the Americans on this front are doing quite well, solidifying their hold and dispersing an immense amount of troops along the borders, but all in all, things are somewhat out of balance in Europe, as neither power has a supremacy of resources and numbers to win both in the West and the East. Welcome all, my name is Jinx, and this is Operation Valkyrie. I'm playing with my opponents, Elite Golden, and a five-star general, as well as Fighting Irish and Major Foe. I have to say, uh, I know I don't want to make this too long, but I have to say I'm really enjoying myself quite a bit. I find these gentlemen very enjoyable to play with, and I, you know, I'm having a lot of fun. So, let's dive right into the turn and see what we have to see starting with our tech rolls. So we have completed our last two techs, um, Improved Construction and Airborne Doctrine, and now we move on to the next, and that one will be, let's say, Long Range Aircraft, rolling an 8 or better. Let's see what the results are. I suspect we are going to miss this one. There we have it, a roll of a 1. We missed this one, but uh, nonetheless, we still get a point here for Long Range Aircraft, and perhaps on the next, perhaps we'll succeed in getting this before the end of the game. <laughs> Let's go on to our turn. So I made a minor miscalculations. Um, the I thought I didn't get the wartime bonus for controlling the Mediterranean because there's a French submarine here. Turns out I still do. So I gave myself an extra two bucks. So that brings me up to 27. Another little thing to kind of correct for is one of my commentators commented that in South Africa I took off the casualty that a militia dealt to me and, and I shouldn't have done that. So I get refunded myself one Marine in that fight. And there's that. So we're ready to get started on our turn. We are going to build a fighter for 10, a submarine for 5, and 4 infantry for 12. That should get us up to 27 IPCs. Alright, turning our attention to combat maneuvers, we'll start here in northern Italy. This elite airborne is going to drop off in Aquitaine, flying 1, 2, dropping off in Aquitaine, and returning back to northern Italy. There is no combat here, so no aircraft from Paris can scramble into that territory. In North Africa, we are going to embark an infantry from Tripoli into this transport. The transport is going to swing north, one, two, uh, to pick up another infantry, and then collectively drop both of them off in French Morocco. So we have two infantry in French Morocco. It's simply going to be a walk-on onto that territory, which is all well and good. So it's an extra, extra buck, so that's pretty fantastic. Likewise, we're going to walk onto Tunisia with these two infantry marching in from Tripoli. So that is potentially another walk-on territory. Again, not too bad. Uh, the, the Italian income slowly and surely goes upwards, and it is quite fantastic to pursue that. Now, one thing I should note, too, that this battleship is going to be repaired at Malta base. So you are allowed to kind of freely move it in and out uh, into the port that's being repaired at, and so it is going to go into port here. And I'm going to grab a little token there to remind ourselves that that's what it is. 
and now he's going to be in port in Malta, and at the end of the turn, he's going to be repaired. All right, turning our attention, so we did those to bows. We're going to do a couple attacks here against sea zones. From A37, a submarine moves to A41 and attacks this sea zone. And in A47, we have a submarine attacking this sea zone as well. We have a seaplane in Sicily. They go two spaces to the Adriatic Sea just by itself to attack that French submarine. And that's it on that front. Over in Africa, we are going to engage with one infantry coming from South Africa and one from Belgian Congo to Rhodesia. And we're sending an attack go bomber and a fighter to engage the lone colonial infantry in Rhodesia as well. So that's what's going on in that theater. And then I have my fleet in I-1. We're going to embark some units onto that fleet. There'll be two Marines and four infantry. And those units are going to swing across. And we're going to land them in Maharashtra in India. We're going to have the Imperium's forces in India for the first time. So we get one coastal bombardment. There is no uh, mountains. I believe mountainous it doesn't extend all the way to that round over there. We're going to have these units dropping off in Maharashtra is the, is the hope and the dream. We're not going to put our units in port at the end. They're just going to stay out here in the water. That is the, the current plan. So we'll have to see how that goes. To support that attack, I know these units aren't actually attacking, but one destroyer is going to come from the Mediterranean Sea in Sea Zone M4. One, two, three, four to the Sea Zone. So that's two destroyers and, uh, and a heavy cruiser in the Sea Zone. And going to go into Maharashtra. All right. I do believe that is it for our combats. All right, that is it for our combats. So let's start with um, let's start with the uh, raiding stuff, kind of the least important stuff, and work our way to a crescendo of attacks. Okay, so we have the the one off the coast of Brazil. We have a submarine, uh, uh, it Italian or Nova, uh, Imperium submarine. So we maxed out that convoy line of the Americans. So four uh, as the attacker, out and blue as the defender. There. Sorry, I said that really badly. Okay, let's see what the results are for the second submarine. And this one we completely missed. So we have fully engaged this convoy line and caused a little bit of damage against the enemy. Three damage against the enemy. Nothing to write home about, but nonetheless, we put some pressure on them. Turning our attention to this attack here with a seaplane against the French submarine, we get to roll a dice at three, but there's no response for the enemy because we're not sending any other ships. So we're going to send this yellow dice. It's going to represent our seaplane. We need to roll a three or less. It's an 8, so we missed that fight, and our seaplane will land back in Sicily. All right, I'm going to delete this round. Okay, now we turn our attention to Rhodesia. We have two infantry. Uh, is there any rivers? No rivers that we're crossing except one from South Africa, so I have to take note on that one. So we can roll a few different dice. Um, they'll be red as a tactical bomber. We're going to put a yellow. We're going to this. Let's say a green as the fighter. Green as a fighter, there we have it. And then we have, um, let's say, the teal over here representing the regular infantry at, uh, at a two. And then we also have a purple here at one. So, yeah, that's quite the mix. We need to score at least one hit to succeed in this fight. One hit. <laughs> one hit out of all that. All right, so the teal hit. And now in the response to that, we have one infantry rolling out four. This is the British Colonial Infantry rolling out a four with a miss. So it was a 33% chance that they would score a hit, and they managed to miss. So excellent stuff. That's always good when, when the Imperial Forces manages to capture territory without any, without any additional issues there. So fantastic stuff. Okay. The uh, Air Force will continue on their way. One, two, three, four, and land in Italian Somaliland. I think I'll just do that now because otherwise I'll probably forget. We have our last little conflict here, and that's to Maharashtra. So we have six dice at two, and we have also a heavy cruiser attacking also, I believe, at a two. But it is a shore bombardment, heavy cruiser at two. So I'm going to roll this dice 12, shore bombardment at a two. Ah, miss. All right, but we do have six dice here at two. So we, my thinking is we'll at least score one hit. One hit with this, taking out their militia. We have one hit. There it is, a two. Now, in response, the enemy has one militia and one infantry, the teal being the infantry and the militia being the purple. Let's see what those results are. One, one hit. So one for one exchange, and now the militia comes off the table, and my marine comes off the table, leaving me with five units left over. I'm going to roll their infantry as well. 
just to shorten the battle a little bit. So five at two and one at four. So we have two hits here and his infantry missed on the second round. So we take off one casualty, we take off two hits, we take off one marine, and we have captured the territory, and cool this character, put him here, and that is it. Captured Maharashtra. Now let's take a quick pause and adjust our income. Oh, one more landing in here, I guess. We grabbed this territory of Aquitaine. Alright, so this aircraft will land here in northern uh, northern Italy again. So now let's go adjust the income. So from the uh, from the French, we've dropped the income bit by three. One, two, three. The Brits go down by one for Odisha, and the FEC goes down by one as well for the loss of Maharashtra. Collectively, that's five up for the Italians. So we're looking at a 26, almost matching the Russian income surprisingly, and exceeding it if you count our wartime bonus. So that's really cool. I I, I really am. Happy to see that some really cool and interesting things have occurred with the capture of um, with the Italian income the way it is. That's really fun. All right, so now we move on to the non-combat. What do we do for non-combat? Well, we're going to move this fighter. It's going to go one, two. We're going to land him in Sicily. Am I going to land him in Sicily? Yeah, I think I'll land him in Sicily. And then we also are going to send this heavy cruiser, and he's going to go into port in Gibraltar, just to provide that one extra defense, if need be, in case the in case the British or the Americans get any ideas. And this naval transport doesn't have any port to go to. I don't think it can go there, so we're going to send in a destroyer and uh, two destroyers and a light cruiser to this position. I think I think that would be all right. So we have a small semblance of of a, a force there. And lastly, we have an infantry here. He's got, from Lower Egypt, he's going to come up to Trans Caucasus, uh, Trans Jordan rather. And I believe that is it. I can't think of anything else that needs to be done. So now we place our units on the board. I'm just cruise over here, grabbing our units, putting our fighter up here in northern Italy. And our submarine also in the waters here off the Tyrrhenian Sea. And then our remaining units, I think, I think we'll simply put them up here in this northern area as well. Northern Italy kind of maximizing that factory out too. So I think that is it. I'm going to conclude this video here. But I'm going to, yeah, I think I'm going to conclude this video here. And that will basically, oh, and I guess I get to repair this battleship. At the end of all that, so there he is repaired. All right, all right, that's about it. So let me count up my. Uh, uh, I don't need to count up my income. I just need to simply collect. I need to simply collect my income. So I'm at twenty six, plus yeah, twenty six plus six bucks. That's really cool. So that's thirty two bucks to spend on the subsequent round. So lots of fun, lots of fun. Now I'm sure a good chunk of that will be taken away from me with the uh, with France reacquiring, say, Aquitaine and the like. But nonetheless, this will be a lot of fun. Okay, everybody, thank you all for watching, and cheers.